Hey everyone, Korzik here. Welcome to another bonus episode of Let's Play East 1 and 2 Chronicles Plus for the PC. In this episode, I will begin covering some of the bonus content from East 2 that I didn't go over during the course of the main playthrough. So, just like with East 1, I won't be going over absolutely everything, just the stuff that I find to be interesting. Uh, also, like East 1, I am going to be doing this in chunks. So, the first episode of East 2, I played from the start of the game up through the boss of the mines. So, that is what this episode will be covering. Now, there are a couple things I won't be going over just yet. Namely, uh, the first of the quote unquote New Game Plus cutscenes because that uh, spoils something that you really shouldn't know about at this point. And also the bestiary potion, which I will be getting during the course of the main playthrough. So I will be going over that stuff eventually, but not just yet. Anyways, let's get started. The first thing here is right outside Benoit and Lilia's house. If you examine this tree here, you can see that it has uh, height markings from when L Lilia was growing up. So, minor detail, but I think it's a neat little atmospheric touch. Next, if you go into the clinic, if you remember, at the beginning of the game, uh, Leonard here, he came uh, running down the steps or crates or whatever they are with a message stating that uh, Dr. All was trapped inside the mines. If you want to, you can actually explore the pigeon loft where he came from. There's not really much to do up here, although you can uh, go and uh, uh, enjoy the view from this window. I don't really know what the point of this is, if it's supposed to be a reference to something or what, but yeah, again, it's just purely atmospheric. Um, speaking of the pigeons, at the very beginning of the game, if you, as soon as you exit Benoa and Lilia's house, you can catch sight of the pigeon that's carrying the message from Dr. Rawl. You can catch sight of it as it's flying up this window here. So that's a neat little touch, but uh, yeah. Not much to do up here, but neat that you can actually come up here. Next, you see these apples on this counter flap here? What do you think is going to happen if I open the flap? Yep, they scatter everywhere. And as you may have seen, Lender and the nurse just kind of had like shocked reactions like, what are you doing? Why would you do that? So, not much point to it. Uh, While well, you can get apples at uh, a couple different places throughout the game, these unfortunately you cannot pick up. So, it's just something to do if you're bored. It does get you a Steam achievement, but outside of that, no real point to it. Okay, next I picked up this ancient tablet from the ruins of Mundoria. If you remember, uh, this NPC right here was the one that told us about it. So let's show it to her. Yes, it is. So... She's apparently expecting a cut of the loot because she was the one that told us about it. Uh, I think she's going to be disappointed. Um, she does say that we wouldn't know about it if it wasn't for her, but uh, you don't need to talk to her at all in order to find it. And if you do that, if you get the ancient tablet before talking to her and then you show it to her, there's a uh, slight dialogue change, but it's uh, very minor. Next, I want to talk about gifts. So I mentioned this in the main playthrough, but I didn't actually show it off. So gifts 
uh, you can gift uh, 11 items to any NPCs, any villagers, and so on and so forth. Uh, any items in the bottom two rows here, with the exception of the item in the bottom right, which is the bestiary potion. So any of these 11 items you can gift to NPCs. It doesn't matter what you gift them. For the most part, they will react the same way regardless of what you give them. So you can give them wings, which you can buy from Jade here in Lance Village. They cost 100 gold apiece. Uh, herbs, you can get these at a few different points. Uh, you can find one in the mines, or you can buy them from the clinic at 30 gold apiece. Apples, you can find them outside in the field, just outside Lance Village, or you can buy them from Jade for 10 gold. Rotafruit, you can find it in the ruins of Mundoria. And Marl Flowers, you can find these also out in the field outside of Lance. Or you can buy them from Jade for 10 gold. Uh, by far the easiest things to gift people are Marl Flowers and Apples, because you can either buy them from Jade at a cheap price, or you can find them in the field outside of Lance. They refresh. And at this point in the game, uh, you probably are wanting to conserve money, so uh, yeah, these are definitely the best ones, the apples and the flowers. So most NPCs, uh, while they do have unique dialogue when you gift them things, uh, they that's all they really have, it's just unique dialogue. There's no point to gifting them things except to get their character mask in. What a character mascot is, is a neat little screen decoration. So if you go to Options, Display, and then Mascot down at the bottom, if you look in the top left corner of the screen, you can see a character sprite of various, various NPCs. There's one of all the NPCs of all of the regular enemies and uh, uh, several special mascots you can unlock. You do start the game off with uh, 13, I think it is, mascots. Those being Fortune Teller Sarah from East One, Menea's Nurse, Shrabador Rhea, Fina in her plain clothes, Dogie, Dark Fat, not this one, this is a special mascot. Photogenic Lilia is also a special mascot, and the way you obtain this is by defeating any boss without taking a single point of damage. Doesn't matter which boss it is, as long as you do it without taking damage, you will get that mascot. These here are also special. Duckling, you start the game off with. That one there is special. Tasty Rodentia, he start the game off with that too. With Priestess Fina, Priestess Rhea, China Dress Fina, China Dress Rhea, and Rado's Annex Rhea. So you start the game off with those 13. You may have seen some others, which I will cover at a later point in time. And you can also reposition it anywhere you want. I'm just going to move this down here, where it's out of the way of the action. So, anyways, most NPCs, they don't give you anything except unique dialogue when you give them gifts, but there are a few that will actually give you something in return. One such person here is Theo, who is right outside the Elder's house. So, after you introduce yourself to them, provided you have a gift equipped, approach them again and you'll get this menu. You can either talk with them, which just gives you their normal dialogue, or give them a gift. 
so he says he can't give us anything in, in return. Well, he is lying, so let's give him something else. And I'm just going to give him moral flowers. Like I said, it doesn't really matter what you give the NPCs. They will react the same way regardless of what you give them. With a couple of exceptions, but for the most part, they don't really care. They'll give you the same dialogue either way. Okay, he's going to give us something now. Nah, not quite what I had in mind. Now he's going to tease us with some smoked meat that he whipped up. However, if you give him one more thing for a total of four gifts, he will actually give you the smoked meat. So, what the smoked meat does, you can also use it as a gift for other villagers, or you can use it to restore all of your HP, so pretty handy. You can only carry one at a time, however, if you use it and uh, give him another gift, then he will give you another, so pretty nice. Another person that will give you something in return is Theo's sister, the Pickard Keeper here, Lucy. And yeah, Lucy does have a lisp. No, thank you. Sounds good. So, if you gift Lucy here three things, then she will also give you some food. The meat pie. What the meat pie does, in addition to uh, you being able to gift it to other people, is it restores 100 HP. Okay, so those people actually give you items. There is one more person of interest that will, he won't give us any items, but he will point the way to one. And that person is Brody, in this house here. So, Brody, you want to give him five things. He does say that he has no intention of giving us anything in return, though. But if you give, give him enough things, he will finally budge. He's not like other NPCs. Yeah, again, he's just uh, being coy with you. Not like he's concealing any sort of secret or anything. Give him one more thing for a total of five. And he relents and will tell us a secret. A pretty good one at that. So, the ducklings that wander are around Lance Village. I don't think I showed those off, but they are behind uh, the clinic. And apparently, they will eat anything they possibly can. Including gold coins. So, let's go see if that rumor checks out. Let's head behind the clinic. And here they are. 
so the one you want to approach is I think the one furthest behind the behind the big one, the baby duckling. And indeed, there is some gold. 500 of it, as a matter of fact. How the heck did the did they swallow that much? Uh, regardless, that is pretty handy. I will say that you do need to have gifted Brody before you can receive that gold. So even if you know about that secret through an outside source, you do still need to give Brody the five gifts before he can actually obtain it. So that 500 gold coupled with the 300 that you get from the uh, clinic from Leonard, uh, that is enough to buy you the first set of equipment. Although it's obviously recommended that you get the short sword for free. So you could you could buy the whole first set of equipment and yeah. So that's pretty nice. Okay, next. I showed this in the main playthrough, but I'll show it again here. Lilia underneath the tree. If you talk to her in this location, then this uh, will open up another cutscene. And yeah, she does give you an apple as well. Only the one, though. She'll show us where the best apple trees can be found. So, if you head outside Lance, and over here, up the stairs here, off to the left, these are the apple trees that she was talking about. You don't actually find her over here, but uh, yeah, this is where I was saying where you can uh, find apples and marl flowers for free. You got one marl flower here. Uh, the apples, they do have a five minute recharge time, so that is something kind of unfortunate with the marl flowers. Provided that you refresh the screen, they grow back immediately. There's another marl flower over there, and if you head up here, there is yet another marl flower. More importantly though, provided that you talked with Lilia underneath the tree outside the Elder's house in Lance Village, when you go to the top of this screen, then you get this extra little cutscene with Lilia. Nothing important, but uh, again, it's just a just a nice nice bonus touch. Got a nice view of the land here. Talking about the demons a bit. No clue where they came from. So just like with East One, they just appeared out of nowhere six months ago. And this does look peaceful. So off in the distance, you can see the frozen cliff right below the shrine there. The Ice Ridge of Nolsha. We will be exploring there next episode. And the building on top is the Solomon Shrine, where the goddesses used to live. But, the people from Lance Village have never made the trek. And with that, Lilia is off to pick flowers. So, something to note about this cutscene. In addition to talking with Lilia in the village when she's outside the elder's house you only have a limited amount of time to get this cutscene you 
need to do it before setting foot into the Rastini mine. Once you set foot into the Rastini mine, her location changes to uh, just un underneath the well outside the item shop, and at that point you can no longer view the scene. Not that it's important, it's just there for flavor purposes, but still. Okay. Next. This file here. This file has fire magic. Uh, Lilia is outside the well here, but I'm not gonna speak with her. I'll do that in the main playthrough, but uh, for now. Um, so I mentioned giving gifts to people, right? And how that produces unique dialogue. Well, with the fire magic, you can indeed aim it at NPCs, and they will also give you unique dialogue. So, if you do that, then uh, if you're trying to get character mascots, then depending on how many times you shot them, you will need to give them a couple extra gifts to butter them back up. Some of them will, will be like, you just shot me a fire magic and you're trying to make up for it by giving me a gift? I don't think that's going to fly, <laughs> but <laughs> it actually does. Uh, point being though, for people like uh, Lucy and Theo, uh, instead of giving them, instead of giving Theo four gifts, you may have to give him up to six gifts in order to get the smoked meat from him. As far as Lucy goes, uh, if you want an extra meat pie from her, you actually do have to fireball her because uh, you can give her more gifts and her dialogue changes, so you have to lower her affection rating if you want to get another meat pie from her, which is kind of kind of a jerk move, but <laughs> what can you do? Anyways. The real reason I've loaded up this file is because I want to fireball Lilia. Sounds like a mean thing to do. It is. But if you fire her roughly 300 times, you get a special character mascot, which is only available in Chronicles Plus. And that mascot is... Chun Lilia. As I said, you need to fireball her 300 times, I think. I'm not 100% sure if that's the exact number. But, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it's kind of a dick move, but, uh, yep, yeah, that is how you unlock Chun Lilia, if you're interested in that. And, again, if you want to keep in Lilia's good graces, if you plan on gifting her, then I, what I recommend doing is saving the game before you do this, because uh, otherwise you'll just have to make up the gifts. It won't be 300 gifts or anything like that. You can only get uh, them as low as minus two, I think it is. But still, just in case you want to save your money. I would recommend saving your game first and then fireballing the villagers to see their reactions. Uh, speaking of Lilia, there is one more thing we can do with her. After you speak with her one time, which I already did in the main playthrough I spoke to her underneath the tree, once you speak to her, you can actually do this. Run up against her bed and we have the option to get in it. Yeah. <laughs> and as you can see, I was just loving it, just uh, messing around in there, doing who knows what. So, that is one of the more well-kept secrets of this game. And uh, the way you get inside Lilia's bed is you talk to her manually. You do talk to her at a few different points throughout the game through cutscenes, but uh, 
to get inside Lilia's bed, he needed to talk to her outside of a cutscene, and then approach the bed. So, kind of perverted, but uh, still neat. Next, in the tomb of Hadal here, if you talk to these pre-statues five different times, they will also give you special mascots. They don't say any new dialogue or anything like that, but you talk to them five different times, and by that I mean you have to actually exit and re-enter the room each time. They will give you a special mascot, and each priest gives you their own mascot. In the Eternal version of the game, I believe you actually have to talk to them ten times for the mascot, but in complete on upwards it's only five times, thank goodness. And one more time. So there are six different uh, mascots you can obtain from them. You can obtain the safety charm from Priest Tadal here. From Priest Tova, you get the luck charm. From Priest Abby, the success charm. Priest Mesa, the health charm. Priest Gemma, the study charm. And from Priest Fact, who I actually have not found yet in the main playthrough, but uh, once you do find him, you can get the Prosperity Charm from him. So, yeah. It's pretty neat. Okay, the last thing I want to show off is... In the mines, uh, once you uh, break down the wall leading to Dr. Flare, if you approach him with a wing, he will actually accept it. He will actually use it to escape. So that's pretty convenient. With this, he can fly right back to Lance Village. So the wings have the same function as they did in East One. Except he can go to a few different more safe havens in East Two, so that's nice. So, yeah, if you're feeling generous, you can gift Dr. Flare the wing, and he will use it so he doesn't have to walk back to Lance Village. That is something I actually do not recommend doing, because you can only hold one wing at a time, and it is better saved for when you are done with the mines. If you don't give Dr. Flare the wing, no big deal, he'll just make his way out. And as soon as you exit the mine, he will be back in the clinic. But still, if you're feeling generous, that's something nice you can do for him. Okay, that is all I have for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you next time.